My name is Mike Craig. I'm the general manager of Ripe Organic. Ripe is a uh, organic retailer here in Dubai. We do a number of things. We um, we supply all the supermarkets with organic fresh produce. We have a number of shops. We sell our organic produce online, and we also run seasonal organic farmers markets. I met Dima about two years ago. So um, Ripe got introduced to. Dima through the right market. So Dima became one of our regular attendees at the market selling her artisan products. One of the great things about Dima and where I really took note of Dima was the fact that um, her stand was always busy and people were really, really enjoying the product. Um, people like her, they, li they like her brand and they like the ethos uh, behind her products. Um, her product is really popular. Lots of people in the market know the product and actually look out for Dima's products. So when we saw that she was, um, was doing well, we wanted to get to know her a little bit better and understand what her ethos was and what she's really doing with the market and what she's doing. So over the last couple of years, getting to know Dima, we've started to um, look at other ways that we can collaborate with her. And it was because of the success of the product at the market that we decided it'd be a really good idea to, um, to form a partnership and bring Dima's products into the Ripe retail shops as well. So here at Ripe, um, we're very keen to, um, wherever possible, to work with local producers. So it's really important to us about supporting local businesses. The other thing that we're um, really keen to do is to offer our customers something different, something that's not available on every supermarket shelf. And therefore, for us, one of the reasons that we wanted to partner with Dima is because she ticks those boxes. She is someone that's passionate about making produce locally, from sourcing locally where she can. But the other thing as well is that Dima also wants to ensure that um, she is working with local businesses, making her product available. So one of the really great things about the collaboration with Dima is that uh, Dima's really passionate about um, using organic produce in her products. One of the things I've been really impressed with every conversation I've had with Dima is that she never wants to compromise on the ingredients. That's one of the key things about her recipes. Um, the nice thing about our relationship is um, it's reciprocal. So um, Dima has her products here in the ripe shops, but we also, wherever we can, supply Dima with um, products to go into her recipes as well. So I think that's another great thing about the relationship with Dima is that um, it works both ways, so supporting each other as, um, as local businesses. I think you know one of the challenges that Dima has had is, um, is the price of sourcing organic. So the reality in a market like Dubai is that everything has to be brought in internationally. Um, outside of the local um, season where it's okay to, to grow in this weather. So as a result of that, for someone like Dima who's so passionate about organic um, and who doesn't want to compromise standards, it means that when, it, when you're looking at your production cost, your, your uh, product, product will be more expensive um, when it goes on the retail shop. And one of the things that um, I've really admired about uh, Dima is that um, she's okay with that. So, you know, going back to my, my earlier point, she, she doesn't want to be everywhere where, um, in every retail environment where it's just about price. She wants her products to be in the right place who, that share the same ethos as, as her. I totally support um, her stance on um, completely sourcing organic. And, um, and that's the reason why um, you know, the price of her products are what they are, because she's been really, really firm that she only wants to include organic produce in her ingredients and she wants to make them in the UAE and support the growth of UAE businesses. Um, we at Urban Retreat have a lot of vendors who came and who used to use Dima's products or they would know Dima and they would tell her we would like to go to Urban Retreat, please talk to Dana and uh, we would like to have our concept there at Urban Retreat. So we had multiple of them come and then they used to sell sandwiches or other items that use uh, Dima's products, Mona products and uh, when people would try them, eat them, um, they would say there's something different, this taste is different, so uh, where is that from? So we saw that there is a need and uh, uh, people are asking for those products as well and uh, I told her why not, uh, we can sell your pro products at Urban Retreat and we have put a stand for her there and uh, it's been doing very well since then. Mm -hmm. I'm 100% definite that Dima will be successful. She is already successful in this business. 
uh, Dima has something that uh, she always knows how to make a twist into anything. She knows how to make something beautiful. She knows how to make something tasteful, whether it's food or not food. So this touch that she has, the way she approaches everything, the way she has passion for everything, love for everything, and a big understanding of the market, the needs of the market, and how to deal with the different circumstances that either her or her clients deal with, that will make her succeed even more than she uh, is right now. Yes, those are the first uh, steps for her, but I'm sure that she will be big. Yeah, so I'm Rishi. I've been um, in the food and communication space for close to 12 years in this market, uh, passionate about food for many, many years before that. Uh, I can burn water though, I have no talent in the kitchen. However, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely enthusiastic about eating, sampling, uh, interesting food. And so when I first heard about Chef Dima, I was very, very curious about uh, what are these food bloggers up to because I was a thing then uh, and now you can guess how old I am <laughs> but uh, I actually found in most of my early interactions with her that I always came back learning something new or wanting to get to know a little more about what she was up to and uh, honestly I feel like there are very few people who bring that mix of you know authority on the subject matter uh, clear passion for food from this region and of course uh, a deep understanding of how to talk to people. Um, in, in all our actual uh, interactions with her where she's come on board to work with uh, any brand or to collaborate with one of our clients, we found her best in, uh, in her element, right? When you put her behind a, a cooking table and in front of many people because she knows exactly who is how interested, she has a good read on the room, she actually picks people out and engages with them and uh, makes, makes our job much, much easier. I mean, it's a, it's a plug and play turnkey model. Chef Dima in, I'm out. I don't need to worry about anything. So it's been a pleasure uh, working with her. I s sort of, at some level, stalk people who are doing great things with food, especially here in Dubai. And uh, I think I must have known of Chef Dima well before I actually knew her. Uh, but I'm honored to actually be in this segment now that I know her. Uh, she um, she actually is unlike many chefs. She's not temperamental. She you can you can see that there's a lot of passion. So in in my field of work, I think uh, we're almost always looking for uh, interesting people, personalities, uh, people that bring authenticity that can actually. Um, uh, show show your audience an experience, you know, take them on a journey. And uh, these happen to be very, very uh, reputed individuals in this market. Uh, of course, uh, they cover anything from parenting to lifestyle to decor to entertaining to actually food. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure my, my team, my colleagues, we work with at least six or seven of them per quarter. So that's a huge volume of uh, individuals to actually be connected to. Um, I have to say that uh, Chef Tima is OG, right? As, they, as my younger colleagues would say. But uh, also that there is, uh, there's almost a connection to purpose. There's, there's so much passion um, in, in the way she comes across. And I feel like that's primarily uh, what sets her apart. There's absolute authority, there's knowing food like she does. And then there's coming to it with this degree of passion that um, she can keep you, you know, engaged. Yeah, so, I mean, I wish I had, like, more opportunities to actually uh, engage with Chef Tima, maybe show up at one of her uh, hosted tables or just be at that farmer's market a little more. Uh, because every time I do see her, there's something new. I, a, just from the five minutes that you talk to her, she'll be able to tell you about Nablusi olive oil versus uh, extra virgin olive oil versus processed. And I mean, I can walk away smarter, uh, more interesting from any conversation with her, but also, uh, this is a true test of, uh, you know, endorsement. It's one thing that I keep telling half a dozen of my clients to, in a commercial scale, work with Chef Tima, but she's in 
um, almost every conversation that we have with uh, people that are in the food space, uh, she's she's a beacon. She's an example that I, I like quoting. She's not one of those people that will ever let you down in that space. If I have to gift a friend or a family member, I'm almost always buying off of Mune.com. Is a place that I keep referring back to friends. And so when friends come and ask me, where can I buy pomegranate molasses or you know smoked harissa? And I'm like, stop looking elsewhere. Uh, you don't even want to go to the supermarkets, order here. What's your favorite product? The smoke shatta, the red smoke shatta. I actually prefer the shatta by itself, but uh, yeah, because it, it, it's made in olive oil, such fresh ingredients, um, and that, that smoke flavor comes through every time you eat it. Have you ever had her tell you that it's out of stock because the season's over? I stock up like we've got about four bottles of the green and four bottles of the red. I'm Rashid Shali. I used to be a TV presenter for the morning show on Abu Dhabi TV. The first time I met uh, Dima was in the week prior to going live, so it was rehearsal week. And when I walked into the studio and I introduced myself and I said, "What are you cooking for us today?" She said, "Prawn spaghetti." my eyes started sparkling. <laughs> it wasn't time for spaghetti, I think it was 10 in the morning, but I was already hungry. I, I didn't have an issue of eating that spaghetti right there and then. Um, she kind of reminded me of my childhood back when we used to go to Italy and taste the real kind of pasta because it was authentic, as authentic as what we used to eat back in, in, in Italy. It was probably, it's still in my, my memory as one of the best prawn spaghettis I've ever had in my life. And we clicked straight away. The friendship started. As long as you can feed me, I'm your friend. <laughs> um, then um, she knew I'm, I'm, I'm a big foodie. Uh, I don't look like it. I know I don't look like it, but I am. Uh, but I had certain allergies, so uh, she kept pushing some of her food, which I've never tried. I'm very picky when it comes to food. So try this dish. Okay, this is my first time. Try this. This is my first time. I, at least I've, I think I've tasted 20 or 25 dishes for the first time, just from Dima. Uh, she gave me the urge to try new things when it comes to food. I'm very pro protective when it comes to tasting new things. So, um, as an example of that, um, avocado, for instance. I never tasted avocado in my life. It's not because I don't like it. It's just that I never had the chance to taste avocado. I didn't like the way it looked in the salad. And she insisted, in one of the episodes we were live, and she insisted that I had the, the avocado. And I, Okay, it's been 30 years, I missed <laughs> tasting avocado. So she opened my eyes into new experiences when, when it comes to food. It's not, what she does is not as good as it looks. It's even better. I mean, we have a saying in Arabic, we say, oh, the eye eats before the stomach. And yes, it looks good, but when you, you put it in your mouth, it's just a different kind of experience. I'm not saying that because she's my friend. She really made me try new things, and that's why I'm here today, I think, <laughs> to try her food, not for the, not for the shooting. <laughs> There's something very unique about her, and I think this is, that only becomes, it comes to you when, when you practice enough, and when you're good at what you do. Uh, she makes it look easy. She makes it look unbelievably easy. Whenever I see her cook, and sometimes in the breaks uh, during the live show, I go and I, you know, take a taste, try something, and or she walks to the, to, um, the couch where I'm sitting and she insists that I taste something and she gets my, my opinion before we go to the uh, final stage of actually tasting the food. Uh, she makes it look easy. and. I look back now at the episodes and I go home and 
I tell my daughters, you can do this. It's easy. It's not. But this is, this, I, think, I think this is a secret. When, when someone is so good at something, uh, they make it look easy. It's like when a, a good football player, you know, he scores a goal or makes an assist. You're watching it on TV and you think it's simple, but when you go and try it yourself, it's not as simple as it looks. We've done around 100 live episodes together. We tried every kind of food we could think of. Uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it was Sundays and Wednesdays. Uh, and whenever we had a special kind of episode, like the National Day, like the Flag Day and so on. And uh, I think she never panicked and we always had disasters. You know how life is, live shooting. We, we go live for two hours every single day. There, there must be a mistake in a place or another. She might forget uh, something. Uh, the blender might not work. Uh, but again, the thing is she was so calm and we never felt that there is an issue. We came, last 15 minutes of the episode, we tasted the food, after we, after we shut down the episode, we go out, uh, off uh, air, uh, every single person in the studio, in the control room, the director, the assistant director, the producers, everyone just rushes into the studio to get what's left over of the food. Of course, when they don't find anything because me and my, my co-host used to finish her all the food. But then she started realizing that. And I don't think anyone else would have done what she used to do. She cooked extra for everyone. We even had a hashtag for, for us, the hungry crew. So after live, we go on social media. Everyone is so busy eating, stuffed. Their mouths are stuffed. They don't want to talk. They just want to eat. I'm working on a, on a YouTube show now, a fishing show. It'll be the first of its kind in the, in the region, the first Arabic-speaking fishing show. And uh, one of the first ideas we got is we have to do a cooking episode with Dima. I catch some kind of fish and we come to her kitchen and shoot here while she cooks for us different kind of, I mean, it could be the same fish, but with different styles and different cuisines, because we did this once in Sabah al -Dar. I called her uh, on a Saturday and I was like, I have fresh yellowfin tuna for you. Please cancel whatever you have planned for tomorrow. You're cooking fish. And she went like, okay, cut them in thin slices and bring them in the morning. <laughs> and this goes back to the original comment and I said, she doesn't have an issue in when it comes to innovating new cuisines and I'm ready and this is this comes I, th I believe with experience I'm ready for a challenge just let it happen so I first learned about Dima uh, I think it was maybe nearly three years ago a friend of mine uh, came to me and said he met this amazing woman who does storytelling with food and he gave me her business card and I remember to this day it was a square business card it wasn't like your classic rectangle and I wrote on it on a note and I kept it in my wallet and I remember I'm like I had to contact her how are we gonna work together I don't know um, and we had it, I think it was we were two years into running a film festival a Palestinian film festival so me and my friends we run a festival called Real Palestine and um, so then we we're brainstorming like with each other about how we're going to do the next edition and we decided we're going to have a food market uh, like a market that's going to have food and we're like i remember it i'm like dima dima we have to contact dima so we reached out to her in addition we had like an open call and since then it's been history we've been working together for three years now and um, we're working together on our next festival uh, and dima will take part in the food market and but this time also we're doing two communal breakfast together uh, at cave people where we're gonna have like um, like a shared concept table kind of thing and uh, Dima is gonna do her storytelling on certain dishes not all but some of the dishes will link to um, similar uh, storylines of the movies we're screening but we're also one of them is gonna be about women empowerment so it's gonna be interesting 
what's great about Dima is um, she's not just a food cook like she's really researched her recipes and she's also researched um, the the traditions that came before the recipe are the rituals that families had and she also tried to visit different homes and different villages I mean I'd say villages because in Palestine we would refer to our hometowns as the villages that we're from um, she would you know try and see what were the differences in the recipes and maybe see is it because of the certain ingredients uh, grew in that in that area or, or how did it evolve and and that's amazing I mean it's it's like being a data scientist and that's the great thing about you know reading Dima's cookbook and you know you you can you're learning it's not that you just have to do the recipe there's a lot of like information behind each recipe which is awesome and what's great about having her take part in our festival is in addition to having like her famous kak and all the yummy tasters which when we're starving because we're like working all day we're constantly taking bites of um, is that you know like she's storytelling you know you'll see people like always see a crowd around her table because she's constantly sharing information and trivial knowledge and did you know this and did you know that and then she's like also like the fairy godmother of the market because she's treating us all with her food and sharing stories and saying you should take this home and how about you try this and and like she's there like on her feet the whole time and she's talking non-stop you know it's it's like she's full of energy and you could see there's so much passion and and what she's saying and and she really like she's really motivated in what she's doing which is really beautiful to see and us as a festival we're also all about storytelling so we're storytelling um, you know through film and moving images and you know not many films are about food maybe you'll have like a family setting or where you'll see if like a dish of matlube or something but like Dima adds on that touch where she really talks about food and you have a chance to taste those flavors and also everything she does is is ethical in the sense where like her glass jars are compost made out of compost material um, I mean it's circular in the sense that she's trying to be sustainable so that that's interesting that's a story itself <laughs> Uh, my favorite product is uh, there's so many they're all good and what's good is that you can eat them without bread and still feel like fulfilled and and full of flavor um, but I have to say it's the green shuttle uh, I remember we uh, we I bought a few flavors to take home and I went home starving and I opened the green shuttle and I ate it I had like five spoons the next night again I ate it and I did that every night for like five nights in a row and I finished it all on my own it's a good treat if um, you don't eat carbs and you want something that maybe sweet something spicy and also something with nutrition because they're all made out of natural ingredients um, it's it's a good go-to snack I'm Palestinian originally and um, I mean I don't I've never been there and neither have my parents and uh, they grew up in Lebanon so I I mean the festival and having access to information that Dima provides is really important because it's a lot of things that we don't have at home or maybe hasn't been passed on to my parents or you know it's got lost in translation sometimes you're asked what is the sweetest thing you've ever had or what is uh, the sweetest moment you've experienced and what is the sweetest sentiment we we like sweet and we always attach sweet to everything emotional and big and and i would say that the sweetest thing ever is gratitude that's the minute that you feel that you 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 appreciate and understand how lucky you are one to be here to experience this two to be able to um, do something so important to you and maybe 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 somehow end up being one of those people who have um, contributed well so I think when I talk about sweet that's what comes to my mind always gratitude <laughs>